A little while ago, I did a video letting you know about DALI 3 coming to ChatGPT, and I'm really pleased to say that it has arrived in my ChatGPT Plus account. So I can now finally create images using ChatGPT, and that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. We're gonna create a wide range of different images and just see how good this DALI E3 is. So here we are. Let's give you a couple of um, bits of information about how to use it. First things first, this is where it will appear if you have it. So as I say, you need a GPT Plus account, and it will be right down the bottom there. You can see DALI 3 uh, beta, just select it just like you would any of these others and then it will be ready to use there's nothing else different about where you enter the message but you're now able to put a prompt in that generates an image and whilst we're talking about images let's let me tell you about the different sizes of image that you can create with this so the standard is this wide image version which is 1792 by 1024 pixels so that's the default and then there's square and that's 1024 by 1024 perfect for things like instagram posts facebook posts and so on and then you've got tall which is the the long thin version and it's 1024 by 1792 so anytime that you request an image if you just put wide square or tall that will be absolutely fine to describe what you want so the first thing that i'm going to try um i'm going to get it to see if it can create a logo for us i mean this is going to be incredible if we can use ai to create just logos on anything normally you have to pay a designer quite a lot of money to do a logo now you can do like a hundred versions if you want to you just keep prompting so what we'll do is just paste in this prompt with DALI 3 ready to go. Create a new graphical logo for my luxury coffee shop in London, England. The business name will be Coffee Lux. Use colours associated with luxury. And now let's see how well it does with that. Now the first thing it will do is to create a prompt for itself effectively to, to put into DALI 3 and it will create four different images for you every time you ever do a prompt with this. And you can read them there to sort of see what it's thinking, which is quite interesting. A photo logo of a sleek and elegant coffee cup with a golden handle and rim. With the word Coffee Lux written in sophisticated cursive font beneath it. So I wonder how well it did there. There you go. Look at that. We have four logos. I think the only one that really it kind of messed up is this last one here, which was on a coffee cup, which I couldn't really go and use that, could I? So I don't think that's so great, but this one's really cool and that one's good. And it did take note of what I said, which is to use that kind of luxury color scheme, which is definitely really gold and black. Very, very smart. And then if I want to, I can go and take one of these and then uh, give it to a designer, put it in Canva, tweak it a little bit, but at least it's generated some really good ideas for us. And we can go on to ask it to do other versions of that logo as well if you want to, and in other color schemes. So if I just go on to this part down the bottom here, I can now say, can you now give me some versions of the same logo in a dark blue and gold color scheme. That might be nice because dark blue and gold is also kind of a luxurious color scheme. So we can extend on that. I don't think it will give us the exact same versions of the logo in that color scheme, to be honest with you, because it just re-prompts the same prompt, but then adds in what we've said. So this is the exact same prompt right here and then put against the dark blue background, but results will vary each time, even with the same prompt, because you never know quite what you're gonna get with AI, of course course and there we are there it is and it's explaining everything right there about one two three and four versions i don't think it's done it in dark blue i'm pretty sure let me use my color dropper here and just double check that Ooh, that is dark blue it's extremely dark blue that's pretty much black and then there is some blue involved in this but not an awful lot but it's still done a good job of creating logos i think you'll agree look at that i mean which one do you think's the best out of those i actually think probably this bottom one here although obviously they've spelled it wrong they've added an additional f but it's good enough for you to then maybe just hand over to a designer or edit in like i say canva or something like that and just make it your own and make it spelled correctly this one isn't a logo 
really. I mean, that's, you know, not something I could go and start printing and putting on t-shirts and things like that. So it's just sort of put it onto a marble cup, which again is associated with luxury, I suppose. So not a bad effort for logo creation and definitely cheaper than hiring somebody to come up with all of this stuff. So now let's try something else and get it to create an actual photograph this time. And what I'm going to do is put in this prompt that says create a photo of a young woman in an empty gym doing sit-ups with a text slogan saying work hard when nobody is watching and then we'll put it um with these let's put it in a square why not in square format there we go that's all we need to do and now let's see what it can do with that prompt so it's building each individual prompt for the four versions that it's going to give us first one says a photo of a young woman with medium length brown hair and athletic build and a spacious well-lit gym she's midway through a sit-up with her hands placed behind her head and determination evident on her face the gym equipment around her is neatly organized but not in use emphasizing she is the only one there and the bottom of the image in bold white letters against a darkened background this is good the text reads work hard when nobody is watching so there's nothing wrong with the prompt so now let's see how well it actually produces the image from that here we go so what have we got here um well we've only got three images which is strange i don't think there is a fourth one there there's always four um when it does this usually but let's have a look at the image quality yeah i mean that looks just a little bit it's cartoony for me. I don't think that looks good enough. What about this one? Woo. Yeah, not entirely impressed with this one either. That looks, I don't know. She just looks kind of slightly out of proportion. She's got big hair. I don't know about that one. Work hard when nobody's watching. They've spelled it incorrectly and done a double C. So they're clearly not there yet. This one is probably the best of all of those, which was the first prompt actually. Uh, work hard when nobody is watching is spelled correctly. And she's kind of looking right at camera doing a sit-up. But again, if I zoom in on this, let me see if I can even zoom in on this. No, I can't get any closer than that. But basically, I would say it just doesn't look 100% real. If it was like quite small, I don't think people would notice. But if you really look at it, you can see that it's not a real person. No, I'm not happy with that one. But it's pretty good overall, let's be honest that we're able to just type in something and then get an image out of it that is pretty cool. Look at that. You know, if that's just in your Instagram feed, would you immediately know that's not a real person right there? I don't know. Maybe maybe you wouldn't. So that's how it copes with doing kind of uh, images like that with text on them. Now let's give it a go doing something else that could be useful for business owners and people who would like to write a book. So this time I'm going to get it to do me a book cover uh, for my new business book, which I don't have, but it's called The AI Future and put the book on a desk with the front of the book visible. So it's kind of doing a product placement of this new book and designing the cover for it. At least that's what I've asked for. So now let's see how many versions it's going to do this time. Should do four. That's that's what I've been getting all along when using Dali uh, E3. But we, there's our third and there's our fourth. So yeah, we should have four versions any second now. Ah, here we are. So this is the problem that we're facing here. I apologize for the inconvenience, but Dali E is currently experiencing high demand, I'll bet. As a result, I wasn't able to generate all of the images as requested. But the ones that it did do, it's brilliant. I mean, look at that. This is the best result yet. The AI future, just on a, a desk there like that. That looks really cool. That looks like the real deal. It's even done the reflection, although it has done the reflection with the incorrect text. So it's these little details. And then it's also spelt it incorrectly on the spine of the book. But I really do love that. And again, we can adjust this in like Photoshop maybe or Canva and just get it right. This one's really good, the AI future. Got like a brain with like a robot brain. I think that looks brilliant. And again, it's just spelled it incorrectly there on the spine, hasn't it? The AI Futuriture. 
um, it's put there. So not so not so great on that one. And then this one here, brilliant, because it hasn't got the spine of the book visible and the front of it looks fantastic. I really like the look of that. The AI future has spelled it correctly there and put it on a very industrial looking desk. But that's pretty cool. I mean, you know, we've got to look at where we've got to here with AI image generation. You know, being able to just type something in and get something of this quality is pretty incredible, even though it's not perfect. So there we are. Let's try something else now as well. I'm going to get it this time to do something a little seasonal. I'm a bit ahead of my time here, but I'm going to get it to create a Christmas card design with Santa on rollerblades in cartoon style. Here's the first prompt that it's made. We'll scroll down. There we are. Cartoon illustration of Santa Claus confidently rolling rollerblading down a snowy street with snowflakes gently falling around him. He wears his traditional red suit, but with knee pads and a helmet for safety. Very thoughtful. Children of various descents and genders cheer him on, their faces lit up with joy and surprise. In the background, festive lights twinkle on houses and trees, and a reindeer peers curiously at Santa from behind a snow-covered bush. So, uh, ChatGPT is very inventive. Wow, look at that. That is pretty cool, isn't it? Look at Santa right there. He has definitely got rollerblades on, he's got his knee pads. Lots of children cheering him as he goes down the street in the snow. This one here, he's on it. He's in a skate park with a, a load of uh, like little elves cheering him on. That's really good fun. And then this one, he's ice skating instead of uh, uh, with rollerblades instead of ice skates down a frozen lake. And then we've got him as a gigantic person right in the middle of a town square. That one's a bit weird, but these two, cartoon style, definitely, and they look fantastic for the design of a Christmas card. I mean, this you can. Imagine that being a square card. That would be absolutely perfect if you had that on the front. That's really, really good fun. So I like that. I think it did really well with that. Now, the final thing I'm going to get it to do, and this is a tough challenge. This is a very tough challenge for it, I feel. But we're going to try and get it to do a chart for us that explains how rain is created in simple terms for six to eight year olds. So let's try doing that. Create an illustration that shows how rain is created for my class of six to eight year old children. I'm thinking like a teacher here. So now let's see if it can really help in education as well. So the first prompt is being written, illustration of the water cycle for children aged six to eight. Show a bright sun shining on a blue ocean, causing water to evaporate and form fluffy white clouds. As the clouds become heavy, raindrops start to fall onto green meadows below. And then it's got all the labels that it should have on there and everything. And by the way, if you love AI and chat GPT, then you've got to come and join my free group, which now has 7.6 thousand members at the time of doing this video. And we're always talking about AI image generation. We're talking about prompts. We're talking about everything to do with AI and software, really. And as I say, it's completely free to join. The link is beneath this video. Just come and join in and, and get involved and ask any questions that you want. We've got a really good, helpful group of people there. So getting back to ChatGPT, look at what it's done. Again, it looks like uh, that Dali E is very busy at the moment because it's only done us three images and not four. But um, how good is it? Let's just take a look at this one. Actually, if we don't, if we just click on it, we'll enlarge like that. And you could also copy the prompt there as well. Put it in again, but this time make some changes to it. So it's spelled a few things incorrectly, like clouds. I can see that one says Klaus, uh, an evaporation spelled incorrectly as well. But again, this would be fairly quick and easy to edit in something like Canva just to get it right. And it looks bright and colorful. So it does appeal to a younger audience of say six to eight year olds and suggesting the right things in that the clouds pick up the rain from the water. It goes up into the into the sky. The sun heats it up and then basically starts filling up the clouds with water and then they just pour down rain into the bottom there. So um, it's got the right idea. I don't know about the next one, mind you. This one looks really quite 
tricky and complicated. I, I wouldn't even know where to begin with that one. And then finally, this one, uh, very similar to the first one, but just with a bit of a different style, really. And again, some spelling errors in there as well. So I would imagine this is something that they will iron out in, in due course. Again, the technology is still pretty new. Oh, it did do a fourth one. It just didn't show it. And there we are. It looks, <laughs> that looks a bit intense. It looks like Niagara Falls is is uh, coming down right there in the middle out of that cloud. But maybe you could work with this. You just have to adjust the text again and maybe put in a few extra arrows. But a, a useful picture for a starting point, and that's about it. So that's it. That's some of the things that you can do with DALI 3. If you found this video interesting, then please do uh, like and subscribe for more videos about ChatGPT and AI and software. I'd love to have you uh, as part of uh, subscribers on this channel. And uh, there should be another video coming any second, so stick around. Thanks for watching.